You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR-FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, what does literary success look like to you? And today to answer, we have on Helen Escott, author of Operation Wormwood. Uh, what does literary success look like to you? Like when you think of like, ooh, I all know I'm a successful writer when... X happens what does that look like for you when I get the right feedback from people when I have people coming up to me and saying I read your book and I got closure from it or I read your book and it changed the way I think about things and to me it's not a financial success you know uh, I, I don't think it comes but a paycheck not as a writer uh it's it's whether it moves people and yep. having people coming up to me and saying you know this book changed my life I, I thank you for that to me that's as good as an academy award yeah no i agree um and i wish you luck because something man the hardest thing to do is to get people to give feedback like like it is it is harder to get people to give you feedback on a book than it is to get them to buy the book and yes like, yeah thank you very much Next on the line, we have J.E. Solo. She recently just put out her novel, Freak. Uh, J.E. Solo, what does literary success, in air quotes, look like to you? Well, it's definitely a combination of two things. One is readers. You know, uh, having a base of readers who um, relate to the work, like the work, want to know what, what's coming next um, and that's what you write for and then the other side is to just have a level of financial um, flow say from that realm so that it also um, helps to sustain me so that I can keep doing it you know yeah no of so course so those two things that's all yeah <laughs> Thousands of readers and lots of money. Not Fame and fortune. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even need to be that famous. Just, you know. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> or even that much money. But yeah. yes, some yeah. semblance of of that. And certainly the most important of that to me is readers. Yeah. And, so, and, and to be fair, I jokingly say fame and fortune when really it's uh, uh, enough notoriety that you can make money and the ability to pay your rent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And have people appreciate what you do and, you know. For sure. Get readers are it. good like that. Reader, readers, there's a reader for everything, I always say. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Chelsea B., author of London Calling and Christmas Mornings. What does literary success look like to you? I feel like literary success to me is someone who, well, they don't know me, like, personally, or even, you know, have are recommended from a friend who knows me, just a random person coming up and saying, your book did something for me no matter what that thing is whether that's inspiring someone to write or inspiring someone to get out of a bad relationship you know any number of things yep. and so it's not as much as i love all of my friends and family who have been tremendously supportive they're biased i want that yep. unbiased person who could just as likely hate it yeah i have a bad thing where um if someone reviews the book i end up contacting them and thanking them and getting to know them and then I and then suddenly we're friends yeah and then I discount their opinion because now we're friends You're even right. though even though they started <laughs> out so they're either <coughs> friends or reporting you as a stalker yeah there is no in between no in between thank you very much next up we have the author of alligator and february 
Lisa Moore. All right. Uh, Lisa Moore, what does literary success look like to you, in your opinion? Uh, what it looks like, what literary success looks like is it's really when someone, anyone, anyone, even just one person uh, is touched deeply by something you've written. Um, I think I think that is that is unparalleled feeling of sweet joy and and you know sometimes i'm talking about when they are when someone is touched when someone is understood what you were trying to do and feel that they got it and that that it it belongs to them it belongs to them because they put the work into reading it and so i think that is that is the most beautiful thing there is about writing that is um that is what success is if if or well, that's the most fulfilling thing i don't know if i don't know if there's such a thing as uh, success as we usually mean that term because um you know we all know hundreds of fantastic writers who never had any success uh, in terms of money or fame or, you know, I have seen countless magnificent books uh, uh, that never reached publication or, you know, there are many writers who became famous after they died. Um, most writers never make enough money to live on solely through writing. So those I don't think are the markers for success when it comes to writing. I mean, I wish they were, <laughs> yeah. but I, I, I just don't think they're the marker. I mean, they're a kind of success, I guess, but, but the real success is when the work touches someone. That's, that's wonderful. And that's a really nice answer. Uh, I had a very weird experience. This isn't about me, but um, I had a very weird experience uh, about three weeks ago. So I, I write trash. Like I write, it's not meant to be literary. Like I write trash fiction that's just meant to entertain. And it's not really meant to stick with you. Uh, so I don't, I don't get that experience very often, but I had uh, an email from uh, someone who I'll, I'll keep anonymous, but three weeks ago, uh, and she's a fan of my trash. And she wrote to let me know that in the lockdown, she's stuck with her family, and she's been having trouble because she doesn't get along with them, and that she'd been contemplating suicide, but has been escaping into these books. Um, wow. And distracting her, and that she wrote out to, to thank me, um, even though I'm just writing absolute trash. But uh, that was, I don't, I don't think I'll ever live that one down. You know what I mean? Or, that's that's or, beautiful. Yeah, it's but I, strange. I, I don't think you should say what you're writing is trash, though. I mean, that, that's in the eye in the beholder. I, I definitely look back at my younger stuff because I, I was very young and it's still in print. So, like, if, if someone comes along and wants to try out my stuff, I'll usually give them something new and then say, that's better if you're really still, if you like that, go back and try my trash um, from when I was younger. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's odd. It's it's an odd state to be in, and it's I, I I don't necessarily say trash with a negative thing. Like I'm a huge comic book reader. I and I loved like I I love reading your books and I love reading comics, and I have to switch back and forth. So I'll read something heady, like I'll read something from you or from uh, from Jessica Grant and then or Bridget Canning, and then as a, like, chaser, I'll read an Uncanny X-Men trade paperback to kind of purge and, like, just pure entertainment, not meant to get anything out of it. So I don't... Just because I'm saying my stuff's trash doesn't mean I don't think it has value. It has value as the chaser. You read something and put your brain at work, and then you read something where you can turn your brain off, you know? Well, I mean, yes, I hear what you're saying, but I just wonder if there is, in all writing, some kind of commitment and integrity in terms of 
um, the even just the impulse to entertain and the yeah. impulse to connect. You know, I think, I think, um, I think that's important. Okay. It's Im- well, I mean, thank you. I, I mean, obviously, I love your work uh, as well. But uh, yeah, th- thank you. Anyway, we'll move along. Sorry, that got a bit real. Um, <laughs> uh, Lisa Moore. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have John Dobbin, best-selling author of The Starving. Uh, what does writing success or success in writing look like to you? Um, really, it's just kind of unbelievable to me. It's kind of dreamlike um, because I've had this goal to be published, to be recognized as a writer and an author um, pretty much my whole life, and I never did think it was going to happen. So now that I'm actually getting some recognition around it, um, it's actually kind of unbelievable for me. Yeah, like I, I, I have a hard time believing it. Like I, I interact with it, I deal with it, I do it, but I'm still kind of like, eh. That, that's not me. That's that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Morgan Murray, author. Currently, he has the book Dirty Birds with Breakwater Book. Uh, Morgan Murray, what does literary success look like to you right now? Like, what's what's the goalpost for, oh, I'm successful now that you're feeling right now? Um, ultimately, it'd be amazing to be able to make enough of a living to have less of a day job. Um, <laughs> to beat around the bush a little bit, so it'd be great to make a living at it. That's that's um, a very reasonable and practical goal. Yeah, yeah, and and not fame and, and fortune or anything, but just you know enough to not have to go to work every day somewhere else. Yeah, but uh, in the meantime, I'd be thrilled if you know people would read Dirty Birds and if they'd like Dirty Birds. Yeah, um, it's my first book, so uh, you know I'm not planning on setting the world on fire, but it'd be great if it was well received enough to uh warrant a second book i'm i'm (laughs) sure it will be i I think you should probably get to work all right yeah thank you very much next up we have diana brown author of saltwater joys what does literary success look like to you literary success for me um would to just would be to continue writing so that is my goal. I've written one book. I have I <clears throat> have another manuscript finished. I was in a contest for a three day novel writing. Yeah. Uh, and I I came out with a manuscript. And Good. so I'm not ready to edit it yet, just because I've been busy with Saltwater Joys and then this next one. Yep. But I have that one. When I'm ready to edit it, yep. that one's ready. And then I'm also dabbling into um, a little bit of nonfiction. Nice. Just uh, so there's so many. I, I think as long as I have an idea, yep. that is success to me. Good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Nicole Little. Nicole Little is an acclaimed short story author who has been featured in more than a half dozen titles just in the last year. Okay. Uh, Nicole Little, what does literary success or success in literature look like to you? Well, you know, I, I feel I feel successful now. I felt successful when the first one came out in Kitsora. Like, that was, you know, I don't want to be too exaggerating. That was a big moment for but, a lot of people. But it was, it was pretty big for me. And know, that was like, a big book. I mean, like, that was... A big production that that wasn't easy to produce, <laughs> and it's gorgeous. Like it is absolutely gorgeous. Like it's. I assume you have one. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course, I have it out on my bookcase on display. Oh, of course. Um, it's a beautiful book. It's not just like it's a work of art. You know, it's not just something that you can read. It's something you can you can see and experience. It's all-encompassing it's not just the words it's everything else even the feel of it and the smell of it it's you know it's 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 gorgeous um so yeah even that was that was a success to me if i had done nothing else after that that would have been enough for me you've done quite Um, a bit after that 
I know, I know. But if, if I had only done that, that would have been, I would have died happy just with that. So it was, it was, um, it was a pretty big moment for me. Okay. Um, and uh, for Mother's Day, my uh, my husband actually got a um, uh, a print of the. Um, oh, I saw. Uh, like a canvas of yeah. the yeah of the of the picture that accompanied the story that I wrote. So we've got it on the wall in our living room. It's beautiful. That's amazing. I love looking at it. Every time I look at it, it's like this big, you know, reminder, and it's it's a great memory for me. So that's awesome. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Ellen Curtis, who is the author of the Infinity series from Engine Books, as well as the editor of the From the Rock anthology. Um, success in this industry, I think, is being able to have a fan come up to you and talk passionately with you about your work in a way that sheds new light on something that you've written, a way that makes you look at your own work differently um and realize that you know someone has gotten something out of it something unintended out of it maybe something unintended maybe something that something that they needed okay thank you very much next on the line we have amanda labonte author of the call of the sea and supernatural causes series uh what does literary success look like to you like um, always just beyond reach, I oh. would say. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's all. I think whatever I think it is right now, if I achieved it, it would be something else. That's fair because you're yeah. the most like kind of critically acclaimed author at your place of publication I don't right think now. That's true. I think that is. I don't think so. I feel like it is. I feel like is it? Yeah. Is it? I feel like it is. But is it? I feel like it is. I feel like that's probably. Lovely to say, but probably not quite accurate. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think it's whatever you're like. Like I would have said before, I had a book published that just getting a book published would have like that would have done it for me. But I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's always, never gets scratched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's it's the the it's always worth the journey. Like I think if you feel like you've achieved everything, then you would just stop. Yeah, I think. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep pushing. I could never. I'm always amazed by Harper Lee. Yeah. In that, like, except except for the last few years of her life, like she wrote the one book, yeah. To Kill a Mockingbird, and then just didn't. And that, that boggled my mind. I, I was know. Like, how can you that is have the, one the thing writing about her... urge and never have the urge again? How can you do just that one time and not? It's like I don't. That I don't totally understand. Um. I, I don't get that. Well, I, it's I a loved good thing that Walking one Bird. was perfect. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and maybe that's it. Maybe, like, she didn't think she could compete with herself. Maybe if you do produce the perfect novel, then that does scratch the itch. Yeah. But every novel is inherently not perfect. But I think also if you feel like you've achieved success, then maybe, for me, I, I might not continue wanting to learn yeah. and better. So, like, I hope that I'm trying to get better as I go. So I, I don't know. I think that it's probably okay not to know what it is. Yeah. But yeah, it's always, it's, it's what it's not right now. I think that's the problem. I think it's every time you hit it, you, you, it changes. Like yeah. it's a, it's a personal like goalpost that just keeps moving. Like I thought before I had a book published that it would be having a book published and then I had a book published, and it was like, it, it's not, it's not that. And then like two books, like it's not that. And then, um, you know, uh, getting to be a guest speaker, and it's not that. So it's, I think that it's actually for me, if I could reach a point where all, like aside from doing like my family stuff and taking care of the kids and and whatnot, if I could reach a point where like my job was just writing yeah and however much i make it that is if i could like make enough to like contribute like enough to the household to keep everything running then and i could i could retire and just only do that like even in my like even as i age if i could just sit at home and write stories all day that would be which is funny because that was the thing that like 
that that's the thing that you're you're doing even when you're aspiring like you're sitting at home writing stories you just yeah you think that the goal there is to publish them and then when you publish them i feel like the goal becomes like well i just want i just want to be able to create yeah so i think hitting a point where i can just create all day would be amazing it would yeah yeah it is yeah thank you very much Next on the line, we have Kayla Krantz, who's calling in from Detroit. Uh, She's originally from Houston. She writes the Rituals of the Night series. Kayla Krantz, what does literary success look like to you? To me, it would just be people who are actually touched by my work. Like, for me, it's never been about the money. It's just how many people will read my stories, how many people will be affected by my stories. That's a really good goal to have. That's really nice. That's a good answer. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Brad Dunn, author of After Dark Vapors. Um, What does literary success look like to you? Uh, I would love to just write. Yeah. Like, if, if I lived a modest lifestyle, just writing... That's like, man, that's success. Yep. You know, I don't have like super high ambitions, you know. I think that's most authors. I mean, there's, I I think even the ones that make it big. Yeah. Their goal was to just make enough that they can live and support their family from writing. Yeah. Like just, honestly, just minimum wage income writing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's trying, that's kind of where I'm trying to get, Um, you know, that would be amazing. Yeah. You know. Thank you very much. On the line, we have Bridget Canning, author of The Greatest Hits of Wanda Janes. What does literary success look like to you? What does literary success look like? Um, I think you're basically having, uh, you're, you're publishing a book and, and, and hearing from someone uh, saying that they really enjoyed your book is... That, that's pretty much that's pretty much it like knowing that you wrote you made something and someone enjoyed it and got something out of it for themselves uh that's yeah that's i think that's why everybody does it that's why i do it makes sense and you've done that so great thank you thank you very much next on the line we have sarah thompson who in february released her first book through engine books called the love of summer uh, Sarah Thompson, what does literary success look like to you? I have no idea, and I probably never will, because no one is ever going to consider me a literary writer. That is healthy. That is a healthy attitude. Uh, <laughs> most writers just keep moving the goalposts. Like, oh, I'm a successful writer when I'm a bestseller on Amazon. And then it's like, well, I still don't feel successful. I guess I'm a successful writer when I'm a bestseller on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, I still don't quite feel, you know what I mean? I feel like success as a writer is completing a project. Like, that's really all you can hope for. Like, can I actually finish this story I started? Can I finish this book I'm writing and that's the level of success. Can I write the number of words today that I want it to write today? I actually look at it in the micro a lot. Yeah, I, I judge it on daily goals, which is rough because if you don't meet them, then you're just, you've got no energy. Yeah. I'm there right now. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I took a month. Off. I had to take a month off because of all the stuff going on, and now I'm getting back into a project that was really chugging along before, like you know, ten thousand words a day, and now I'm like just struggling to string a sentence together. And I know I'll get it back, but I'm just like I hate myself right now. Yeah, and it's horrible to sit there and stare at a blank page. Yeah. Oh my god. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Paul Carberry, author of the Zombies on the Rock series from Engine Books. Uh, what does literary success look like to you? Like, like, what do you think of as success in this field? As just uh, having someone that you have no connection to, like just someone you met at your table, or they picked up your book and they come back and they say, "I loved your book." Yeah, that to me is success. Like, not like financial. Like, that would be great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but like, that's not the only mark of success. Like, people can buy your book and then realize I don't like it. Yeah, it's when they come back and say I loved your book 
and this is why, and they tell you why, and th that to me is success. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Alicia Morrissey. What does literary success look like to you? It's a hard question. I don't know if I can answer that one, Matt. Okay, sure. No, you know what? I am going to answer that one. Okay. Uh, literary success, to me, is nebulous. It's much like celebrity. It's It's not a real thing. It doesn't exist in the world. You can put a certain goal on yourself in terms of number of numbers of books sold or numbers of books written or published none of those things really matter if you were to really put success the word success on it finishing a book yeah probably would be a big thing for most writers because it's yeah i have eight of them that are unfinished so you know yeah i, I yeah just do agree. finishing it should be the success i agree yeah yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Aaron Vance, editor in chief of Engine Books and the editor of the From the Rock anthology series. What does literary success or success in this industry look like to you? Oh, success to me is when I can just do editing and writing. That's fair. And that's it. That's fair. Um, and I don't mean like being super rich. I mean like make ends meet. Yeah, I'm not dying. Yeah, sounds um, good. So that's for me is literary success, but I think that's for me editing is more my thing than writing. Yeah. Um, I think for a writer, I think that's going to be different. I don't think I'm going to get literary success as a writer just because I'm more of an editor. Yeah. So. Yep. I'll be like, oh yes, that book was successful because like 50 people bought it and they enjoyed it and they got back to me. Like for yep. me that would be, but that's not literary success. That's just like, good job. Yeah. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Heather Riley. What does success in literature look like to you? Mm, I kind of think of it in two different ways. I kind of think of it in the I don't have to work anymore. I can write now type of way, which I'm not at because I really love my teaching job and stuff. Sure. But I think success for me when I first realized I was successful was when I had fans coming up to me asking for the next books. Yeah. So I knew they'd enjoyed my work and I knew they wanted more. And to me, that was success. Yeah, that's a cool moment. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tanith Frost, best-selling author of the Immortal Solace series. Tanith, what does literary success look like to you? Literary success is an idea that is currently evolving for me because there's a lot of pressure to define literary success as having tons of readers and especially making tons of money from book sales and making lists with bestsellers. And that is certainly one kind of literary success. But I'm starting to realize that literary successes for me might be more about writing the books that I want to write and making them as good as I can possibly make them and leaving behind that kind of a legacy. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tracy Waddleton, who is from Trapassi, Newfoundland. She recently just put out a book through Breakwater Books called Send More Tourists, The Last Ones Were Delicious. Tracy Waddleton, what does literary success look like to you? I think it just makes me happy that people are reading my work. I don't know, that might even be kind of trite to say, but I'm just... I'm glad to have you know published my first book and have it out in the world, and I hope that someone likes it. Anyone, one person. I think even one person liking it is literary success. It's not a, a path that I would have chosen for the money, or you know, it's like uh, it's hard work. But I think just if one person sits and reads your book, then I think that's that's success. Cool. No, that's that's good, and that's. At least one person has done that. You're talking to him. So there you go. <laughs> that's good. And then I'm liter literarily successful. Then you're literally <laughs> successful? I don't think that's uh, yeah. literarily successful. I don't know. Now I'm making up words. I'm a writer. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.